Hello, World Wide Web. I'm Dr. Shadow, the internet personality of the best hair, and welcome to the March of the Clowns. About halfway through March, but I had to get the Phantom Menace review done and, well, uh, Zelda. But the point is, this month we'll be looking at various clown themed horror movies. As clowns are people done up in heavy makeup to look silly, it's no surprise that the pale skin and bizarre, exaggerated features can scare the ever loving fuck out of a lot of people. And, well, the freaky funhouse folks frolicking in the forest probably didn't help much. But, the point of it all is, today's review is We All Scream for Ice Cream. Which is actually a made-for-TV movie. Or, rather, an episode of a television series, Masters of Horror. A Showtime series, Masters of Horror, gave known horror directors a budget and a camera, and let them make whatever they pleased. Then Showtime added stipulations, like no child-on-child -child violence, so adult-on-child was okay. Because logic! In any case, Tim Holland, of Child's Play fame, produced the chilling tale We All Scream for Ice Cream about a clown ice cream truck driver who comes back from the dead to kill people! That's pretty much it. Now forget a paragraph, the whole synopsis can be summed up in a sentence. But let's take a look at We All Scream for Ice Cream and see if it suits my tastes. Well, after the TV series introductory sequence that has fuck all to do with the movie finishes, we open to a man begging his son in the middle of the street at night, DON'T EAT THAT ICE CREAM! They say that this is the best ice cream in the whole world. Don't look like Bluebell to me, bitch. You shouldn't have grounded me. Okay, what the fuck am I watching? Well, I, I, I suppose that did answer my question, so thanks. Thus, after the opening credits are shown along with a cameo of the ToeJ and Earl Phantom ice cream truck, we suddenly teleport to a funeral! Here we see Papa Joe, played by Tim Henry, give a heartwarming eulogy about how Kent, played by Brent Shepard, for the 20 seconds of screen time he had, truly meant a lot to him. Seems Kent meant so much to the people of this town, they have to let Lane, played by Lee Turgson, know exactly how much. You never should have moved back here. That should have been you. Fuck if it's rude or not, I want a wife who spends her time at my funeral telling everyone else how she wishes they were dead instead. That's love right there. But yeah, Lane used to live here, but moved away some time ago because of dark, dark memories. It's ch ch cheery time. Uh oh. Come on, kids, gather round. Uh oh. All that ice cream. All those smiling kids. All of my friends. But I was lacked as intolerant. <laughs> They don't tell us what the actual issue is just yet, but don't worry, there's plenty of slow panning shots and somber music to make you realize you're supposed to feel something here. I mean, we've had no time to learn about these characters or information to go on, but go on, have feelings. And the strange thing is, he feels cold even though it's a whole 70 degrees outside. Of course... I'm in Texas, and 70 is... No worries, he's just overreacting. Life here is great with his wife Angela, played by Ingrid Tersh, and his lovely son Toby, played by Quinn Lord. I was seeing an old friend of mine. How's she doing? He's resting now, boss. Oh, great! Well, what exactly is wrong with just telling your kid he's dead? The guy's dead! This is a horror movie! People die! I mean, it's a lot less disturbing in the long run than Toby's little going around with Yippee! Nap time! So the kid is acting creepy, but it's Lane's own damn fault, so he goes to the usual spot for dealing with his own failures as a father, the bar. This specific establishment being owned by Papa Joe, and frequented by a childhood friend, Toot, played by Lyle St. Goddard, who points out that there was another childhood friend who died before the last one, therefore, CONNECTION! Did you look in Ken Baffler's casket today? No, it was a closed box. You know why? Because all that was left of him to bury was his clothes, too. His prize jinkos. I guess it really is over. What the hell? My god, it does fit in a pocket! It all happened since Lane moved back to town. <laughs> Lane. Lane. Yeah? Ah, yeah, the familiar awkward moment where you walk into a room and don't know what to say, and everyone around you thinks you're a serial killer. Doesn't matter anyway, as Toot goes conveniently unconscious so that Papa Joe can explain to Lane that the crazy old drunk blames him for the deaths of their old friends, and that Joe thinks this is worth investigating. Tell me the truth, old buddy. You ain't one of them serial killers, are you? I hate serial. I hate shitty dialogue with a total lack of charisma, yet here we are. So they figure, fuck the body count, it's probably nothing, and Lane heads home. 
However, along the way, he is freaked out by the presence of small children. Oh, and this. Damn it. Weird ass supernatural unseasonably cold ice crystals forming all over the windows of his car, and he's just reacting like, Oh man, I left the ice scraper in the garage. He also seems to have left his kid in the driveway. Or some weird otherworldly force did. For ice cream. Where'd you hear that? School, probably. It comes from a song made in 1927. Where'd you hear that? Or countless children's television shows. It's an extremely common phrase. It'd be weirder if he somehow made it to ten without hearing it. Thus, Toby doesn't have to answer his stupid questions, and he is taken back inside, where Lane can be angry with his wife for letting him waltz out by the side of the road at midnight. I don't know what happened. I, I would never do anything to her. Hey, hey, it's okay. I'm not angry. Anger requires a range of emotion that I'm just not capable of portraying. But what's this? Around the same time, we see the phantom ice cream truck is doing the unthinkable, giving a child ice cream. Around this time, Toot is being driven home, but demands they let him out because he has to barf! <laughs> Off-screen. I'm sure the side of the road is right fucking there, but... No, 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 there is no good fucking reason that he has to run off-screen into the middle of the goddamn woods to barf. <laughs> Especially into his own hand, even after he's already alone in the middle of the goddamn woods. I know horror movie characters are stupid, but this is a whole other level. But what's this? His child begins eating the homunculus haagen at this very moment, which seems to have the adverse effect of causing the man to melt into a mound of mush. You okay? Speaking of stupid characters, are they honestly going with the angle that this guy thinks that this squirrely looking motherfucker in the woods is the guy who did this? The one who looked shocked as fuck and ran away, melted him. We're really going with that. Old friends melting to goo does nothing to spoil the mood though, so long as you haven't seen it. Leave the glasses on. I want you to take some dictation. <laughs> <laughs> Shitty fucking dialogue does. Is there anything wrong with just telling a woman she's got some amazing tits? There is? Oh. Oops. Either way, the sex is interrupted by clown vehicle maintenance and may or may not have happened in the first place. I'm sorry, babe. I just had a uh, weird kind of... Uh, I don't know what you would call it. Uh, flashback? Memory. Those are called memories. It seems we've gone this long without bothering to flesh out the fucking backstory, so we better hop to it. Thus, Lane explains to his wife that way back in the day, he and the rest of his old group of friends were out getting some ice cream. Hey, Big Joe, where's the rest of the bunch? <laughs> Jerking off. And evidently, Joe's a man who ages two years for every one the other guys do. He's the same age as him as a kid, but today he's like in his late 60s. This is a tragic tale, though, of the ice cream truck driver, Buster the Clown, played by William Forsythe. Buster was born disadvantaged, as we'd say today. Well, is he in poverty? Starving? Parents buying the wrong color iPhone? But as he got older, you know, he was just savvy enough to drive the truck and sell ice cream. Well, before that, he was doing above average at his job at tech support. But it seems there was a dark shadow hanging over Buster's head. That shadow being Virgil, the leader of the little youth gang. Or just a member. Or maybe just an asshole that none of them knew how to tell the fuck off. You want it? Eat it! At the very least, he does bring the whole group together. In their hatred of him. But perhaps in an alternate plane of reality it makes sense. Anyway, the story goes that everyone lines up to get ice cream. Except for Virgil, who merely lines up to smoke curse and be a total asshole to the poor innocent clown. That is, until things go too far. What's up with this nose? Ah! Holy fucking shit! He has no nose! No idea what all the buildup of him being a little slow had anything to do with that, or why it matters at all, but fucking no nose! What happened to Buster? He died later. 
From what? Heart attack? Nosebleed? Fucking old age? What happened? But the point is, this is all Virgil's fault, somehow. And Lane saw Virgil at the funeral, so obviously there's a connection. If that's too much of a stretch, Joe calls him up, and he goes out in the middle of the night to see what's left of Toot. Oh, crap. It's not crap, no smell. Jesus Christ. Not Jesus. No cross. Fuck you! However, the man who was driving Toot home says he saw someone out in the woods. Someone matching Virgil's description. And yes, we're going off that stupid fucking idea that the terrified man who ran somehow melted the guy. Joe, you better call the police. For what? This isn't a crime, there's no body. It's littering, Joe. Didn't you see the no dumping sign? Thus, this goes fucking nowhere, and instead we watch as Angela interrogates her other kid, Marilyn, played by Alexia Fast, as to what she was doing last night. But I did kind of have this dream. It was more like a nightmare. Ooh, a nightmare. What happened? Get killed? Kill people? Discover your carpet is made of tiny, hungry baby spiders? We did go out because we wanted to get some dessert. But that was stupid because... Nobody's open. Your town lacks a convenience store. Such horror! So that's all she has to say, but it's enough to get Lane's wife more concerned, as from what she hears, all the parents strangely doze off when the sun goes down. The little rascals plotting the overthrow of the parental oppressors in the dead of night. Now you're just pitching ideas for better movies. Stop that. Thus that night, the weird supernatural power of adult beverages kick in, knocking the parents out while the kids get ready to take another life. Cherry time. Toby! Toby! Angela! But for some fucking reason, supernatural sleep spells only work some of the time. Because fuck actually explaining things. Since he's conveniently unaffected by the magic NyQuil, Lane scoops up Toby and even makes it outside in time to make sure his daughter doesn't eat the ice cream of cause your father to die. Despite the fact that since the magic is kinda spotty in this movie, who knows if it would work. Either way, there's something far more important to note here. You got something stuck on your shoe. The litterbug problem in this town just keeps getting worse. It's a shame. What's going on? What part of that little guilt trip story did you not tell me? Guilt trip? He didn't blame it on you, you self-centered bitch. He did get the whole fucking thing wrong, though. Turns out buying ice cream wasn't a spur-of-the-moment idea. Nothing at fucking all happened involving the nose, and he's even got several more friends in the gang now. It turns out, the tragedy that befell Buster that day was because the kids decided to pull a prank on him. One distracts him by forcing him to do math and make change for a fiver, while another pushes. And finally, Lane's job. Do it, you pussy! Come on, do it! Release the brake on the ice cream truck, causing it to roll down the hill, crashing, ruining his job, and utterly fucking up this man's life! Ah, <sighs> silly harmless pranks. Except, of course, it's even worse because Buster's directly in his path and is fucking crushed by 16 tons of sweet death. I'm dead. I'm dead. See? So yeah, he fucking murdered the guy. Or manslaughter, in any case. Either way, the characters are still fucking idiots. So what? No, Virgil is... Tripping around in a clown suit, playing Pied Piper? Look on his face like, bitch, I can't believe I reproduced with you. Because he knows it must be the clown come back from the dead doing the killing. She thinks this sounds crazy, so he tells her to take the kids and go to her mother's for a bit. There is literally no bad side to this, so obviously she refuses. No bother, Lane has to head out to talk to Virgil about this, because... Fuck it, we gotta get him properly introduced one way or another. And I need to mention that he's played by Colin Cunningham. Yeah. Pussy boy. And his character traits are that he's an insufferable prick. That's it's fucking great. You had 30 years to develop character traits, and all you did was grow out your hair and get bad teeth. Though there is something else of note after Lane asks him about what he knows about what happened to Toot. <laughs> I carnal that little geek. You know that? I did. I swear to God, I'd done him and he squealed like a little girl and never dared say a word about that to nobody. <laughs> Come on, Virgil, you sure you don't want to save that story for the eulogy? 
Once Lane joins in the dumbfuck chorus of saying it must have been Virgil who melted the man, because after all, he was in the vicinity and looked confused, Virgil points out that actually it was the clown they killed, and on his way to the park he saw Toots Kid eating ice cream the clown handed out, shortly before the man melted before his eyes. What's the matter? Don't you believe in revenge? What does this have to do with Metal Gear Solid? As Virgil believes, the clown has come back from the dead to hand out special ice cream to their kids. Ice cream that kills the father if they eat it! Something he doesn't have to worry about as he never got a wife and kids. Woo! When my kid bites into a York peppermint patty, I get the sensation that my cold is having a fight with my spine. No surprise he had a kid he didn't know about and begins melting before our eyes. anything to go by, the proper way to respond to seeing a childhood friend fucking melt in front of you is slack-jawed stupor with a doll of half-assed screaming. Nothing worth doing anything about on the spot, though. Best let those kinds of things wait until morning, so he can go over the important parts with his wife. I need you to do this without asking any questions, without hesitation, because you trust me. Get the lube. Nah, he just wants her to take the kids to Grandma so they don't kill him. Honey, that's a four-hour drive. <sighs> Please. Uh, saving your life is mildly inconvenient. With that out of the way, he heads over to Papa Joe's for some help. Which he doesn't get, because Joe thinks just because they're the last two standing, that's no reason to think any of this is true. Virg doesn't have any kids. The man bragged about rape. It ain't a stretch to think that one of his wild sperms must have gotten away. Did Virgil just bragged about fucking toot? It didn't specify if it was willing or not, it's kind of a jump to make. That revelation is somehow enough to get Joe to believe Lane's story, but not quite enough to get him to think this is something they are even capable of fighting off. However, Lane convinces the man it's worth it to make sure their families don't suffer for it, so he returns home to his family. Why are you still here? Well, I just thought I'd wait and see if you made more sense after I had my coffee. That must have been an interesting sit at the table. Hmm. So he wants me to get the kids away so he doesn't die. But all this just sounds crazy, so he might be crazy, and if he's crazy, I should get the kids far away so he doesn't hurt them. Ah, fuck it, it's a four-hour drive! So he tells her yet again to get the fuck out of here, because either you'll kill me, or I'm dangerous to be around! And she figures that she can't shrug her way out of this one. Now it's time to get ready for the big climactic showdown. What the fuck? Oh, oh, wait, what in the hell kind of remote is that? Wait, wait, what the fuck is that? Why the hell does he suddenly have a prop from an Adam Sandler movie? No idea, but it helps set things up just right with minimal physical effort. Well, except for the kids at Grandma's plan, which runs into trouble when suddenly, the car freezes solid mid-trip. <laughs> That's not nearly what you do to clear ice off windows. Especially off the outside of windows. <laughs> it's cheery time! But it is helpful when the bad guy's like, Oh, I was gonna jump scare, but... The fucking windows are iced over! Man... This means the kids in zombified ice cream hunger leave the car, as these fucks have never heard of child safety locks. And Lane gets an idea for yet another way to save himself from the killer clown. We all scream for ice cream, Buster. But you might want to have your freezer checked when this is all said and done. I mean, it's not quite normal for ice cream to come out microwave soft. Oh, yeah, but there's still Papa Joe in this movie for about 20 more seconds before his kid eats some ice cream, and he melts just the same. Ah, oh, well, that just means it's down to Buster and Lane. You've been such a good boy that you get a special treat. You're fucked, Buster. It's kind of crude, but we know the horror of what comes out when you try to be witty. Oh, Lane means because he's already sent his kids far off. There's no way Buster can kill him now. 
Except, of course, both kids are, in fact, here with them. Oh, but that's what all the remote control sprinklers were for. Buster's so cold, he freezes when wet. Okay. Well, this does give Lane time to apologize for murdering him when he was a kid, and they make amends. But now, it's time for you to go. But that would mean the whole intricately set up ice cream and wrapper thing would go absolutely fucking lootly nowhere, and we can't have that. So the two of them keep fighting before Toby finds the ice cream his father made. No idea where his sister is or how she hasn't eaten the ice cream Buster made, but never mind that. It's one of Buster's likeness, meaning somehow Lane managed to make a supernatural sweet to banish the diabolical bozo once and for all. Nothing beats homemade. Go back to shouting obscenities. You're fucked, Buster. Point is, happy ending! Lane survives, because who cares what happened to that ice cream of him anyway? And of course, Buster's defeated. But they decide, fuck it, let's move back away from here anyway, despite never having given a reason why they moved here in the first place, or couldn't move away earlier! Only to still be haunted by the ghost of the ghost of the clown. That's a funny thing. Killing him didn't work. Twice. Anyway, that was We All Scream for Ice Cream. And it's not good. To be fair, as it was an episode of a television series and not a full-on horror movie, you can't expect it to be life-changingly phenomenal. At least I think you can. People tell me I'm missing out these days for not watching TV, but I digress. The movie uh, episode uh, this it doesn't do a particularly good job of pacing or setup or acting or anything, really. I was actually kind of surprised when I looked at the DVD case and found out the running time is just under an hour. I was bored enough during the initial viewing that it felt a lot longer to me. The opening starts off with a bang to get our attention, but then drags on like it's trying to evoke emotions out of us for the loss of characters we literally had no time to get to know. Obviously, I can forgive supernatural elements in horror making little sense, but they don't even try to explain it in the story. Buster came back from the dead because otherwise there wouldn't be a story. He waited for Lane to move back before killing people because he just did. His method is ice cream eaten by children because, uh, yeah, almost no explanation to be found, and when they do try to explain things, it's insane. They go over how the children are willingly killing their parents because they want revenge. Revenge for petty shit like being grounded. As it's established, most of these guys are good fathers. At the end of the day, with this mountain of problems before it, there is still a little charm to a story like We All Scream for Ice Cream. It's dumb, the acting is laughable, and the whole thing doesn't make a lick of sense, but it does manage to fall into that so bad it's good category of horror, where a group of friends and a lot of drinks can make it an entertaining experience for fans of the genre. If you aren't into B-grade horror flicks, though, best to stay far, far away. Coming in at two ooey-gooey globs of gore out of five. Personally, I wanted to review Blood Harvest this week, but good fucking luck finding that on DVD, let alone Blu-ray. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I've been Decker Shadow. And remember, I'm dead. See? You're fucked, Buster.